Back again with the next installment on the Cavalier rack on the Mustang. Um, I'm going to show you now uh, the mounting brackets that I got them all welded up and how they look and everything and how they fit. And then I was going to move on to that center link that I run into some troubles with. So I'm going to show you here now the troubles I run into and then we're going to go through what I did to fix it. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I've been busy uh, since the last video. I've got them brackets all boxed in and welded in solid. They're permanently in the car now. And uh, I just wanted to get that done. I didn't want to bore you with, um, you know, just making all that stuff up. I just want to get down there and get it finished. So you can see the way I got them rigged up there. I'll get down there neat now and I'll show you. Uh, how it's all mounted to the frame all right so here you go there's the brackets as you can see I got them diagonally put in across here to take in this here this is 316 plate it's a 316 plate on the top is 316 plate and over here is 316 plate and it's all welded to the frame rails I had to put a space around this side to tighten up the uh, the bushing but you can see now I can just bolt them in place they're nice and tidy. They're not lower than the rail here. Over here. I do the same thing. I cut the bottom out of this when I first started. I had to end up putting a whole bottom in the rail to do a nice job on it so I can weld this back in again. Because I had to move it over. You can see it. I had this here section in here and I had to move it over seven eighths of an inch over to here to get this to center on this here. So oh, it's done. So now it's all done. So now that's all done, time for me to move on to this center link. Make the bracket now to go from here to the rack. So let's get started on that now. See, it's deflecting and twisting. You can almost, you can almost need a steady on the outside. I had to leave the oil the arm on, but it wouldn't have worked because the, the bracket went up here. All right, there's that lovely center link that I spent lots of time on, and now is not worth a damn. But uh, that's it. That's all a part of this. What's going on is this here is actually moving, like this here, when you bolt it in the car. I think it's pulling from this bolt hole to this bolt hole here. It's pulling this way, so this comes down, and same with on the other side because it's too far forward from this bolt hole. Now, if I had to mount this directly in line down here and mount it, it might work because then the line of pull is coming this way directly at the hole, not on an angle as such, right? So the problem I got to run into, the only way I can make this work is I got to move these points here. I got to move them right into the center in order to get them so there's not so much movement in there. And better again to move them directly onto this hole here and as close to this hole as I possibly can. So I gotta dream up something that I can mount to here, that'll mount out to there, that'll make the steering work proper in the car. So let's see what I come up with. Now the first thing I had to do in order to uh, try this system is I had to make up some sort of uh, tie rod in to simulate the Cavalier setup that was in it, in it. So what I went and did, I just took a piece of pipe and bent it up so I get the clearances on the um, the boot and everything on it and made up this little shock bushing just welded onto the piece of pipe and put a rod in on of it and this measurement from here to here is roughly the zero point at 58 and 5 eighths I think it is 58 and 3 quarters uh, measurement to get the wheel centered on the Mustang and so there's just to show you the difference in it when you move this up here this is the point now where I'm going to be mounting it to this is the inner mounting point factory on a Mustang and you can see out here this is roughly going to line up with itself this is where the issue lies to it's right here all the years I've been doing it this one here always usually had to be in parallel with uh, your inner bolt on your lower control arm 
uh, playing around with this idea here, I was like sketchy. I said, I'm going to figure this out on my own to see if it's going to work or not. But I've found online there's a number of Mustangs out there running this setup. So I said, I'm going to have to try and experiment with this and see what I come up with. Now, when I first done it, I'll show you now, when I bolted in place, the bump steer was out five inches. When I first bolted that in place and I put that right up in the factory location where that was bolted, it was out five inches. So I left this mounting point alone, and what I ended up doing, I ended up starting to um, shin down this side here, and I started off with a few bolts here, right? And then I put another bolt in, and then I made a spacer up, and then I added another spacer to it. What I ended up with was this much of a spacer on the outside to, uh, to get it where it was good now it was better than good but you can't I, I can't see having that space for that long because you're going to end up having a lot of strain on that there i wanted to get this shorter so what i come up with i figured if i moved this inner location here if i moved it up an inch or so that would change the geometry out here and everything itself would move up so i made this little plate up again just mocked it all up and that thing would basically bolt down to the car like so, and this will be my new location of where I'd mount the shock to up here. Right? And then what I ended up coming up with, I started taking the spacers out, and I ended up with this. That was the spacer I ended up with, that much, inch and five-eighths of an inch. To me, I'm happy with that. I'm going to do a nicer job with it and everything now, and, and, and make a nice spacer and everything to fit into the, the way these are tapered. I've got to figure out something for that to fit inside of it but uh, I'll work on that as well but the biggest thing is I now know that this system can work on these cars like I said before I have very little movement on braking and through zero it's only on acceleration that it will change which in, in the case it'll be more along the lines of drag racing and stuff like this so when I set up this car at ride height it'll be at zero setup so that when I, I'm braking there'll be very little changes so uh, hopefully that was uh, understandable. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know and uh, ask away because this was not an easy, very easy undertaking to do. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I was going to have to scrap the all idea, whole idea or not. But uh, I'm going to show you now um, the whole setup put in the car and what it looks like. So let's go on to that now. Okay, let me explain a bump steer. Okay, the issue I'm going to run into because I've now got to redesign the front suspension in the car, I got to change the inner um, location point. That what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount it in the factory location as the Cavalier, which will make the inner tie rod longer than the factory Mustang one. Now, the issues you'll run into, you'll start running into major bump steer. Now, what is bump steer? Well, what I went and done with this car, first of all was that in order to do this process, I removed the two front coil springs out of the car so there's no front suspension in it, so I can move the car through its ranges of motions. I usually end up, you have ride height, which are driving down the road, and then you'd have braking, where you, that'll be like two inches or so below it, and then you'd have acceleration in the case of like drag racing and stuff like that. So I was more concerned with the ride height and uh, the braking uh, location for bump steer. But to show you bump steer, when I first put this whole thing together with the inner tie rod and moved all the way inboard and mounted in the factory location on the outer uh, stub axle, and yet this is what you run into. Right here, that's zero, okay? Now when I jack it up to two inches, watch the wheel. See the wheel turns in. Now just watch when I go to the range of motions to braking, hard braking, if you were going from which would be, this would be zero again. Now, if I did hard braking, this is what you'd have. See the way the wheel turns out? That's what bump steer is. You have to eliminate that as much as you possibly can. But, remember that in factory cars, there is a certain percentage. What I have there now, I can show you what I have there now. That has a range right here. You look at this here. Here's the numbers there, over five inches of bump steer now this you can't have that so I gotta go in and figure out everything now and start calculating and showing everything I'm not gonna go through every process with it I'm just gonna turn around and figure this all out and come back and show you what I got done 
Okay, to calculate bump steer, I needed to find a reference point. And this is the reference point I found, which was a lot easier. As if you're looking underneath here now, you see I got a block of wood here sitting on the frame rail. So I'm using this as negative two, two inches for my reference line to go by. This here will be my zero point of two inches of zero, two inches of bald negative. And that will be like this. And I'll take my measurements from there. Then positive. for positive two inches. I will add another two inch block like so and then lay the card out on top of it. You get the idea. And from these here, I'll take all my measurements that I show you to show you the bump steer and the effects that I'm running into and whatnot and how I come to solve all this and you know, get this to work anyway. So. All right, let's move on. Running into this dilemma, I had to do some research. So I went online, searched a bunch of things, looked for Mustangs and rack opinion steering, find out what was on the go with them, what people were using and stuff like that. Uh, I come across a, a, a page where I got some measurements for the factory bump steer around them. It was a pretty good uh, article on it, uh, install on a Flaming River rack opinion steering uh, in a 66 Mustang. Um, it was from Flaming River Industries, their webpage. Um, Flaming River rack and pinion install on a 65 through 70 Mustang was the uh, the video and on that they give you measurements that he took he showed how he done it on the bump steer on a 66 Mustang so I took those measurements and went by them to do this whole system so uh, but I'm going to show you now my measurements were different than his and why so I'm going to show you that now Just a quick little thing on that measurement. He gave me an inch and a half, which he measured from here. My inch and three quarters is measured from back here. When we're talking about the bump steer in and out, the inch and a half he's moved in and out, and the inch and three quarters mine moved in and out. It's roughly the same because his measurement is forward of mine, and the car will drop. So my measurement here up front would probably be like two and a quarter, two and three eighths of an inch. Of a measurement from where he took it from so that's why it will change so if you're wondering why my numbers are bigger it's just because my two inch measurement is farther back on the car all right let's get back at this now I'm going to get into uh, showing you every step I took to uh, figure this out but right here these are the factory measurements that I come up with from using the, the factory center link and the factory location with the outer tie rod ends and run them through the motions. Zero was 58 and three quarters, plus two was 57 and a quarter, and minus two was 59. So an inch and three quarters was the number that I had to uh, try to come close to in order for this to work, right? Now I sat down and I played around with lots of measurements, trying different things, recording things, and uh, I ended up finding this measurement here, right? Plus two was 57, zero, 58, three quarters. They always stayed the same. And minus two was 58 and five eighths. Very little movement here. And if you compare the two, they're pretty close. This here is greater at the negative point, which is breaking. Right here, it's usually out, but that's usually under heavy acceleration in terms of like drag racing and stuff like that. I'm more concerned about the zero and the negative numbers than I am about the positive numbers because like you don't want to be driving down the road and hit the brakes and have uh, have it moving all over the road on you and there's not much movement there and of course like I, we've discussed before that factory they were out this much anyway so I'm happy with this and this is going to be the setup and go with all right so remember starting off I had an inch and three quarters of bump steer through the full range of motion so now I've got this figured out now to the point that um, I'm down to an inch 
and uh, five eighths of range of motion with this setup here from the factory. So it's better than factory. What I got done is I got the uh, mounting points for the inner tie rods will be an inch and a half above where they bolts onto the rack. That's what I got done there. And on the outside out here, I have an inch and five eight spacer. I'm gonna have to make something up for that and do a nicer job on it, of course. <laughs> All this is just mock-up, like I've said before. So by doing this now, my bump steer is better than it was from the factory. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, making uh, the pr a proper setup for it, because now, now that I know I can get it, I'm gonna order in the original Cavalier inner tie rod ends and then work on making something for the outside. So uh, that's where I'm to with this now. And we got that issue solved. It's time to uh, get it all straightened away. Okay, so that's it for that. I got that figured out. That was a big worry. Uh, run into that problem and then uh, trying to haul myself out of it. That was a bit of an issue. Uh, if you noticed just now, uh, I showed a video of the tire going through the motions. Uh, it tips in a small bit there at the end of the video. That's about six inches above there. So uh, the range of motion where I wanted to, it's very, very close. Remember uh, bump steer in these anyway, and uh, if you go online and look at some of the videos of the bump steer in these cars It is crazy what was in them, but I'm happy with what I got going on here now. I'm going to order in the um, inner tie rods and the brand uh, bushings and a few other odds and ends to make this work properly on this now um, well, I, there's going to be a few weeks or more for them to come in, so it's going to be a while before it does anything with that. But I'm going to go on now and uh, get the steering column hooked up that I know is I can make this work. And uh, do the universals and all that, get all that done. And uh, be ready for when them parts come in, so I can move ahead on this Mustang. Because that's the biggest dilemma on this car, is getting that rack figured out. So Hopefully um, you understood it, and I made it clear enough to explain myself. So uh, it worked out okay. Uh, if there's any questions or anything, just uh, let me know and uh, I'll try to explain them. I explained as best I could. <laughs> anyway, until next time.